in a time where we need to lower our carbon footprint. All nuclear power problems are outweighed by its benefits, such as low pollution, high output power, stable baseload energy, low operating costs, cheap electricity and reliability. Nevertheless, the construction of new power plants is on decline, with only one new plant being activated in the past 20 years in the United States. High construction costs is one of the main reasons that makes it difficult to compete with other energy options. This is why we don't see new nuclear facilities being built, and those that are have significant construction delays. The average time it takes to build a power plant is about 7.5 years, and total costs could reach tens of billions of dollars. Georgia's Vogdo nuclear expansion is one example. The project started back in 2009 with an estimated fine of cost of $14 billion. It was supposed to be up and running by 2016. Now it seems that the facility will most likely start working in 2021, with a total estimated final cost of $23 billion. These power plants are extremely complex to build and have to adhere to numerous safety standards, which adds even more intricacy. But all of this could be a thing of the past with the introduction of small modular reactors. Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. Small modular reactors, or SMRs, are as the name implies, miniaturized reactors. They work with the same principle, but offer significant advantages to their big brother counterpart. New Scale is a company focusing on this technology. Recently, they became the first US company to receive final safety evaluation report from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. This is an important milestone for nuclear technology and could be the turning point for our carbon-free future. Getting this certification was no easy task. To emphasize how rigorous this step is, NewScale had to submit a 12,000-page document for safety review to the NRC. Talk about detailed work, this process started back in December 2016. SMR technologies offer many solutions to the problems I highlighted previously. Nuclear power plants are extremely complex buildings, and one of the most intricate part is the containment building. In the case of pressurized water reactors, it houses the steam generator, reactor, and pressurizer. Its main purpose is to contain any sort of radioactive leakage as one of the four containment safety stages of nuclear facilities. One of the issues with this system is that it is designed to contain leaks only for short term, while external countermeasures are working to keep the reactor cooled, such as AC power supplies, backup generators and batteries. They take effect in an eventual power loss and work to keep fuel at low temperature, and the containment will work as long as power is available from these backups. Anything that happens beyond what it was designed for, the system fails. One good example is the Fukushima accident. This power plant worked flawlessly for 40 years, but when a second tsunami hit the structure, something that it was not designed for, all of its safety barriers failed, resulting in the meltdown of fuel rods. The dependency on external systems to help cool down the core is a point of failure. Furthermore, maintenance and refueling is another complication. Power plants have to be shut down every 18 months for refueling in a process that usually takes a month out of energy production. These problems, among many others, are brilliantly solved by SMR technology. By making smaller, self-contained reactors, not only you decrease the amount of nuclear fuel, but also less energy is emitted in an eventual emergency shutdown. Let me explain. It starts with the lower reactor vessel, where the nuclear fuel is located. Notice the fuel assembly and the control rods. Connected to it, you have the riser, which works like a chimney. When the water is heated, it rises up to the top and goes around, passing by a helical coil steam generator. This part serves two purposes. One, to extract heat from the coolant, which, second, 
lowers its temperature, becoming denser, and it's pulled down by gravity back to the reactor core, continuing the cycle. Steam generated during this process goes up the pipes all the way to the generator, moving the turbine, producing electricity. The steam is condensed, turned it into liquid and pumped back into the reactor. All of this happens inside a containment vessel that is about 23 meters tall and 4.57 meters wide and can output in between 45 and 60 megawatts of electricity. Everything is self-contained, especially when it comes to safety. In an emergency, the SMR can shut itself down without any external help and remain cooled indefinitely. This is because the control rods are held up by electromagnets. In the event of complete power loss, the electromagnets stop working, releasing the control rods back into the core, blocking the reaction. In about one second, the core goes from 200 megawatt thermal to about 10. Then, the heat is removed by the heat decay removal system located on the sides of the outer vessel. The HDRS was designed to exchange the remaining heat from the core with the surrounding pool. In about 30 days, the core is cooled down to less than 0.4 megawatt thermal and can remain in this state indefinitely. At this point, the transition from water cooling to air cooling is achieved. All of this happens without any external interference. No operator action, pumps, AC or DC power, and no additional water. Much like proposed molten salt thorium reactors. To make sure that everything works as designed, the SMR is located underground inside a pool with 50 million liters of water. This is enough water to make sure that 12 of these modules can be cooled down in a case of an emergency. Not only that, but it also makes refueling a lot easier. The bottom part of the vessel can be removed, the top part can be taken away for inspection while the car remains underwater for exchange. While one SMR is going through maintenance, the 11 others can continue to work uninterrupted with no downtime in electricity generation. Together they can produce a total of 720 megawatts of electricity which can power more or less 720,000 homes. Lastly, the construction of these reactors can happen independent of the building. No special design features need to be added aside from the conventional all-end-of-the-world scenario proof. Switching to this technology translates into shorter construction times and lower costs. Some estimates put the total final cost of the building and the reactors at $3 billion. New scale still has a long road ahead. Acquiring the EFSR, although a milestone for the future of nuclear technology, they still have to prove how safe their technology really is and win the hearts of the public. If this technology will be accepted or not remains to be seen. Nevertheless, this achievement really brings hope to one of the most misunderstood technologies ever created. Alright folks, that's it, we're done here.